Hey, Nana Visitor here, and this is the Shuttle Pod Show. Now, I figured out, okay, dye your hair dark and you're a, a vixen and probably the one who murdered the person. Uh, dye your hair blonde and you're the one who gets murdered. But either way, <laughs> I kept working, you know? Gonna go and do my convention thing. Got my costume, I'm going now. Yeah, we're having a ball. It's Star Trek, y'all. Hey, Dan, I'm going everyone, welcome to another episode of Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have very special guest, Nana Visitor. We'll be answering some of your fan questions, doing some Star Trek trivia. Wash got a new pot, so you'll be seeing that and much more. Um, I'm Erica LaRose, and now for our host, Connor Trenier, and our guest host, Mark Cartier. Woohoo! Hi. Hey, well, welcome back to 2023. Yeah. Or welcome to 2023, as it were. Oh, that's right, it's our first show back. That's right. Oh, happy, happy New, new year. year. Happy New, happy new, new year, year, guys. Yeah. Happy new year. Um, and it's nice to have Drink back with us. Uh, <laughs> he has a new pot. I appreciate mm. you putting him in the nine-pound feta cheese <laughs> pot for... Uh, well, there's kind of a story to that. Uh, you know, everyone on the internet was uh, all upset about the tiny pot, which Erica has right here. Uh, he had outgrown it a long time ago. Yes. So um, the only thing I had access to the other night was a nine-pound feta cheese bucket. <laughs> He Why really do you need feta nine pounds of feta cheese? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping for nine pounds of avocado. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's the holidays. <clears throat> and it's the holidays. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how was your holiday? It was very feta filled. Yeah. <laughs> very Greek. Very Greek. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, it was very Italian. Yeah. Sicilian specifically. Sicilian, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. I, uh, I I spent it here in town with uh, it. it been raining here oddly for ever it seems yeah uh, it really which, hasn't stopped which we need but um no it was nice i was here and then i spent um new year's uh with my girlfriend in malibu i was there for christmas as well with her and her family and uh first time away from my family so um it was nice to oh um, connor no no but it was great it was great <laughs> it was a, it was a really nice a nice christmas and a nice new year's so good yeah and it's good to be back Welcome back. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, treks and trekkers, welcome to the Shuttle Pod Show. We are once again in the bird's nest of the Matrix Theater as uh, guests of Rogue Machine Theater. Thank you. Thank you. We love our space here. And we are delighted, thrilled, very excited to have the multi-talented Nana Visitor as our guest today. Thank you, Yay. Connor. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. How was your holiday? It was really good. Very yeah. calm and quiet and lovely and filled with lots of great things to eat. Just the way I like it. Perfect. Perfect. Did you cook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cooked a lot. That's a thing that's you awesome. do. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> a thing I do. So it was fun. Cool. Yeah. So you uh, were born in New York City. I was. To a theatrical family very theatrical <laughs> I right. mean, and i mean at home too very theatrical yeah and your parents were what did they do my father bob tucker was a choreographer he was associate with jerry robbins for years and then bob fossey so he was like and then he did shows on his own and my mother was this she was a ballet teacher, but people didn't just come to her for ballet. Everyone on Broadway came to her for coaching, but also just for the way, the way she taught dance was the way you could live your life, hmm. <laughs> which, and people came to her, they, they weren't dancers just to get that from What does her. that mean? That means that she was, she was always ahead of how people were thinking and very much how people look at mindfulness now and body positivity mm. um, and self-acceptance and compassion and uh, acceptance of diversity. Um, Arthur Mitchell, I just read this, who um, was uh, a, dan a black male dancer who had people go, just give up. You're not, you shouldn't be in this. And my mother was like, no, you, you have to, you have to dance. And he talks about her in the book as one of the people who said, 
stop it. Oh, and she wow. always talked about, you know, ballet dancers get ri- dancers in general, especially back then, would be like, you have to look perfect. The Balanchine aesthetic. Right. Um, nothing. And she would just be pile up your bones and what sticks out sticks out. You're human. Dance. Use the energy to dance, to be joyful. And that was like very different from how people taught dance. So is that that's kind of on the cusp of the modern notion of what dance has become, Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, Wow. Were they coming in and out of the apartment and were you around all of these people all, all the time? Well, yes. I grew up sitting there bored out of my mind in dance class because they didn't have a babysitter. So I'd have to sit and I'd be like, why is that dancer better than that dancer? Oh. And it was like I was watching Gwen Verdon. And why is she better than, you know, it was like it was every dancer you can imagine. I knew how to dance before I stood up to do it oh, wow. because I had just seen so much of it. Yeah. And I had this audition with Bob Fosse. Oh, my God. Uh, for um, what was that huge movie he did? That was about his life. All that jazz. Oh, all, all that, that jazz. jazz. All yeah. that jazz. So it's showtime. I, I, yeah. His girlfriend got the role. I wasn't right for it anyway. But I spent about four hours, just Bob and me, acting, singing, dancing, talking. Oh my goodness! And I was seventeen at the time, something like that. Seventeen. Wow. I'm not sure how old I was, but I know that the things he told me during that time changed how I thought about the business, what I would do, what I wouldn't do. Um, It was very influential. Wow. And that's incredible. Actually. That's when did you then decide that this was for you? The world of the theater and the world of the theater. You know, I, I was, I got, I, I graduated my white glove girls school um, in Manhattan. (laughs) Um, did it have a great name? Uh, Nightingale? Nightingale. Nightingale. That's yeah. right. So it's having a great That's name. right. And my parents couldn't afford that school. The only reason I was there is Doris Duke was my mother's best friend and said, I want to send the children to school. And that's how I spent all those years there. Um, so then I got into Princeton and it was like Princeton <laughs> chorus girl job. Princeton <laughs> And of course, I took the chorus girl job and I just kept working. (laughs) I deferred for a couple of years. And when Princeton was finally like, you know, you do have to like kind of make a decision here. I was like, no, I'm I'm working. And that's what I would have wanted to do anyway. In in many ways, just culturally, I wish I had gone to Princeton. Mm. Oh, Hmm. Just because being a young woman in the business back then, Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I was so naive. I just didn't understand why it didn't work like in the girls' school. Right. What? You're not going to listen to me? I don't have a voice? Wait, you do that to me and I can't say don't? Mm. Right. You know? Right. And I think the extra time would have given me the resilience and the maturity to have a little more uh, understanding of all that the, the, and an the, independence of mind and, yeah. and exactly and yeah. exactly for those who don't know who doris duke is it was she was the daughter of uh duke tobacco and he had at one time all of the tobacco uh they had to they had to break up his uh, monopoly on it and she and i think and uh, I'm not sure who the other one was, but at one time she was one of two of the richest women in the world. Holy crap. Right. And Duke University and it's oh, like that Duke, oh, that Duke, Duke energy, <laughs> all, 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 of, of, that. all of that stuff. That's yeah. Yeah. that's Doris. Right. And she was like an aunt to me growing up. Wow. Yeah. She was she was a cool and interesting and weird woman. Well, that's fa- like that's fascinating. How how did that uh, relationship come to be? My she was a student of my mother's. Of your mom's, and then they wanted private moms. lessons, and then friendship. My mother was this very 
cool human. Yeah. Really unusual. I was lucky to be a student of hers because I knew her as a mother, but then I got to know her as this human and to respect what she did. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. She taught me a lot. Well, you, like we've noticed you um, on the internet recently, just like trying to look in your background and see what you're doing on social media and things like that to have things to talk about today. We notice that you're doing a lot of that yourself, your own version of that on Mama Instagram, Nana, Mama on Nana. Instagram. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's inspiring You've got people hundreds to... of, of video. And what, what was the impetus for that? It, it, Same thing. It was the pandemic. Oh, and it oh, was yeah, the <laughs> pandemic. And it was my, I would hear of anxiety young people were having. And because I, I struggled with anxiety for so long and other issues. And I had done such a deep dive into understanding, you know, the somatic brain connection. I really did a lot of work. I'm, I'm an autodidact in that way. Um, that I, I got so frustrated going, my God, they just need to know, you know, a few facts about how their nervous systems are working Mm. and take it in small bites. And I just started out of frustration. I just went, who knows if anyone's going to hear this. And I just started in every day just so that they knew someone was out there going, it's going to be okay. Um, Here's here's some ways to handle what we're going through. And uh, now I now I do it intermittently, but I was doing it every day and I felt. Uh, uh, I felt compelled to be there for people. You're like the mindful Leslie Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Bless dear him. Leslie, yeah. dear Leslie. Yeah, so, uh, this is actually a great opportunity to say um uh you're here because of your role in star trek and everyone most of the people watching not all of them but most of the people are watching are, are for that so you're known for playing kira nuris in star trek deep space nine for an entire seven seasons uh, a bajoran major who was a rebel uh who did not want starfleet there but built a relationship with benjamin cisco and all the other characters in the show and and, and blah, blah 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 uh but one of the things that we love about the show is that we get to t- actually learn about your real life and talk about things like the fact that you wish you had gone to Princeton and the, the things, you know, your mom being a, a great human and a great teacher. So um, we will get to all the Star Trek stuff, but we'd like to, you know, continue to hear some of these great stories. Yeah. Um, your mom, mama Nana thing. And, and that's all awesome. I was Are you still doing it? it? Yeah. I kind of... <laughs> I, I kind of track it by your hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> As my hair grows. <laughs> I know. I know. I, think, I don't think I've had that same hairstyle uh, ever. Uh, no. Ever. <laughs> I, I mean, the last time I think I saw you was at the cruise last mm-hmm. year. And you had, you know, spiky short hair. And, yep. and you know, I, I was scrolling down. I was like, well, that was during the cruise period of time. <laughs> short spiky hair i can identify and, and now those. and now it's longer and, and this is your natural curl yeah i had done my hair i wanted to look glamorous today and what then i do? got wet and it just went <laughs> oh the rain did yep. you yep, yep. <laughs> i went natural curl too because of the rain yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah, the sicilian curl over there so so <laughs> what's the first thing you do professionally and it starts out you don't do amateur stuff you go right to the the main stages of auditioning for chorus girls and good speed opera house. I was no at, way. Yes. Beautiful oh little theater in East Haddam, Connecticut. That's right. And I spent a season dancing there and uh, that was, yeah. So I spent years, you know, taking work as a dancer for money. Um, and I loved it. I loved being a chorus girl on Broadway. It was when people say, is it what I think that job would be? That's the job that I say, yes. Mm. Acting is not. Acting isn't the glamorous thing. Oh, God, no. no. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no. Dancing on Broadway as a chorus girl in those years was. It was an well, amazing life. Because after the show, 
You'd go somewhere. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. I found out that the bouncer, I got, you know, rejected at, at Studio 54. I'd go to Studio 54 after the show just to dance, not to do all the other stuff everyone was doing. <laughs> I just go and dance by myself in the main, you know, air, the main dance floor. And the music was the best. The people were the most interesting. And but I got rejected all the time when I stood in line, you know, and right. they, they just choose the people. So then I, I went and I, I left my show makeup on, slicked my hair back and got a tuxedo. So it was like, <laughs> what are you? Yes. What are you? Right. And I got in every You're time. for us. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. The door is open. Yeah. Come right in. It's like, yes, figure this out. And are you doing other? You can't really do both things at once other theater uh, in the meantime or you were consistently working as a chorus girl show after show after well show. i do a show and then i get an acting job and do tv you did. yeah i did a series uh when i was 18 i did soap operas i did everything you could in new york because i didn't want to leave yeah right. so i did three soap operas i did a series called ivan the terrible it was about a russian fan it was like a russian all in the family <laughs> <laughs> with Archie Bunker. Do you remember <laughs> Lou Jacoby? No. It was starring Lou Jacoby and Maria Karnilova, who were, you know, like, if you were back then, you're a little younger than me. You, you probably wouldn't know them, but they were like character actors that were in everything. Right. What was shooting there? I mean, obviously the soap operas were, were all there. Kind of. Yeah. Most of them were. And not that much else. No. Not that much else. Well, you, I, I, we, we have blown past it now, but I really want to find out why you wanted to stay in New York. Uh, you said you wanted to stay in New York. I was one of those people there. There used to be this poster that was a drawing of the United States and it was New York and then absolutely nothing. <laughs> and then L.A. <laughs> And I actually thought L.A. didn't matter either. Yeah. New York, why would you be anywhere else? Center I the world. loved the city. I loved the city and I loved the life and I loved Broadway. And I just couldn't imagine. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine. I was 25 before I came out here. For the first time? Yeah. And I came out with a show and then stayed. And never went back. Never yeah. went back. Well, to live. Yeah. Yeah. Back. Yeah. If I... Got other work and all that stuff. But 42nd Street brought me out to the Schubert that used to be here. Mm -hmm. And then I just stayed. I did a few pilots and just started working. Well, what did you think of L.A. being a lifelong yeah. New Yorker? I've, I've talked to many lifelong New Yorkers and they're like, when I got here, I hated this place. Yeah, it, it, it seemed exotic to me and interesting. And probably at 25, I was ready for the change. Mm. Um and having done enough Broadway, I was like, okay, I'm done with that now. now Out of your system a little bit. You, didn't, you felt like you could move on and try yeah. some new things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't, when I, when I got the call about doing Chicago again, I was in my forties. This was after Star Trek. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, boy. okay put your hat on back, yeah. yeah yeah back back to being an athlete you know because you are yeah right. every step of the day you have to think about what you're doing so you have the energy for the night what was it like um doing chicago um was it the day after 9-11 or on 9-11 yeah we um it was the day after uh they giuliani said nobody on broadway uh, the day after and then the next day we were called back and it was really interesting it actually made me understand what we do because mm -hmm. my son buster i remember he was about six years old and i don't know why he said this but he went but mama you're an entertainer and i went oh god i don't know it's it sounded like i'm I'm a vaudevillian, da, 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 da. Right. And it, what, what kind of life am I leading? I'm an entertainer. Uh, <laughs> so that was in my mind where I was a little wild eyed about my purpose in life. But then um, when they, the boys used to come with me to the horror of the company manager, 
uh, used to come with me to my and sit in my dressing room, and sometimes the guys would take them up in the flies. And oh, so yeah, they were they were little theater rats. And uh, that day, I went. Oh, I have to do this alone. They're not coming with me because. We didn't know what was coming next. Right. And we figured we might be hit. So it was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to work and I think I might die doing right. so. Why? And it was the two to 300 people sitting in this theater. And it was like, in order for the city to stand back up, for everything to start going again, we had to make it okay. And if we're on stage being silly, it's okay. Yeah. And yeah. that's when my purposefulness, being a storyteller, started to enter my mind as what I really do. And um, that that shift changed a lot of oh, things. Wow. But it was hard. You know, we're talking about murder and mayhem. Yeah. And they're looking at us going, uh, uh, it, 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 it's, this is awful. It was right. it was hard. So you uh, hit the ground running in L.A. and did it did it go well out of the gate? Yeah, I figured out. <laughs> you know, I figured out. Okay, dye your hair dark, and you're um, a, a vixen, and probably the one who murdered the person. Uh, dye your hair blonde, and you're the one who gets murdered. But either <laughs> way, I kept working. You know. <laughs> and damn it, I wanted to be the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. And then, so I've always wondered this too, like you did some pilots, right? Oh yeah. Were there any that, you, well, two things. Were there any that you started and went like, oh no, this is not, <laughs> this is, oh, and were there, oh, yes. one, or were there, and were there ones oh, that, that you, that you were like, I wish it had gone. This is it. This is. Yeah. No, none that I went, this is it. Uh, one I wished had gone. The creator of, before he created The X-Files, wrote this sitcom called Meet the Muncies, which is just not a great name. <laughs> it's just not a great name. But I was the star of this half hour pilot. And she was just, she was like, uh, she was like Born Yesterday, mm. the character from Born Yesterday. Right. And it was a delight to do that. Then I did one that was about a talking cat, but they didn't have any kind of way to make the, the movement work like they do now. There right. was they, they just didn't have the wherewithal. And the cat, you know, it would just kind of blur out when the cat spoke. And it was horrible. It was horrible it was a horrible show it was like oh my god this is i've you oh, know like ladies and gentlemen cat? no no it was a real cat that just you know oh, no oh yeah is this talking cat <laughs> oh did they put peanut butter in its mouth or something yeah, no 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 it would just be sitting there and then they just blurred the mouth out and tried to do it was it was oh, jesus wow creepy a little it was it was creepy and awful and it was you know I, I was playing now. the mother and wife who's like, what are you doing? Kind of thing. That's what I needed to do. And it was like, oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end of my career. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> At least I can dance. <laughs> Speaking of that, the one time I lied about my abilities was for the Colbys, they, which was a, a oh. spinoff of Dynasty. Oh, yeah. And they wanted someone who could do point work. Now, oh. I was quite many, uh, quite a few years away from having done point work. And I said yes. And within a week, I'd lost oh. some toenails. Oh, my God. But I was, I did it. And I look at the pictures. Oh. It's like, you are barely on that thing. <laughs> but, you know, I did the job. But, oh, oh God. God. Never yeah. again. Never again. I won't lie anymore <laughs> about my abilities. <laughs> God, when you're young, it's like, you know, can you ride a horse? Yes, I can ride a that, horse and yeah. play the violin. At the same yes, time. I well, can you're ride a horse. You're told to do that. Exactly. You're told to lie. Say yes and learn it. That's right. Sometimes you have three hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a week to get back on point. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh. No. I once said I could speak fluent Spanish, so I did a whole. <laughs> um, I just learned it all. 
and said it, but I didn't know what it was. Oh, you just memorized. <laughs> oh my but god! But that's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. Was, yeah it was good for you. No, it gives me anxiety even yeah. thinking about the lying. Oh God! Yeah, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna get found out. Yeah, it's bad enough that's to just thing. the acting stuff, but then to you know and be on a set and new people, but then to go. Okay, I got to get on this horse. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> and I don't know how. Oh, God. <laughs> so you uh, you do guest star stuff. You do a few pilots. Yeah. I do a lot of guest star. Yeah. A lot. Any theater in town? No. Here and there, little things that I've forgotten. One thing that I did was for Aaron Spelling, uh, and it was called... Uh, the ladies room. And that was actually a bit of a phenomenon at the time. It was, you know, uh, the Lisa Kudrow character that they had for a movie of that. That was from that play. Oh, really? Yeah. He produced a play. Aaron Spelling did. Yes, he did. Oh, at the, at what was the princess theater. Oh yeah. Wow. And there were a lot of interesting actresses as well as Lisa in the cast really interesting strong all women one man wow well we decided that you had never done a show here at the matrix theater yeah no it wasn't the matrix it was further down on melrose oh, oh at the old there's that little theater row <laughs> yes yes right yeah right um so then how does deep space nine come into your life I'm auditioning and I auditioned for LA law and I wanted it so badly, so badly. That was like for a woman back then to be playing a lawyer. It was like, Oh, thank God. Yeah. Finally. Great. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I want that. And she was like, you're not going to get uh, Junie Lowry was casting. Ah. And she said, you're not going to, I, when I went out the door, I remember her in the doorway going, you're not going to get this, but there's something I'm going to call you in on. And I got the script for DS9 and it was probably like four things that I was auditioning for in, in the day. I mean, literally I would pack my car with outfits for the day. Right. Oh, for the auditions. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, Oh, I called my manager and said, you made a mistake. This is, this is written for a man. This isn't, this isn't any, no, it's a woman. They're asking for a woman. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What? It's a good I, thing. My hair is dark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I was, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. What was your audition process like? Uh, I remember two of them. Um, one, was for a few people then one was for the crowded room and that was it it was it wasn't it wasn't extensive wow yeah connor had like nine i had six six mm. jonathan frakes i think had he had like nine, nine or nine. eleven or nine yeah. yeah i mean renee i understand had a lot renee yeah yeah really? he was already renee i know he was renee i don't think it had anything to do with that i really think that they were looking for trying to figure out the elements that they wanted to use, how to, how to put the puzzle, to put the together. puzzle together. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it was like, you know, oh, I only had two auditions. I was a better actor. Let's no. torture this one. We're not really sure. Yeah. 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 I don't think it was that. It's, <laughs> it's oh, that. It is. <laughs> yeah. They just, they, I didn't know it, but. I came in very much like Michelle Forbes, who, of course, was supposed to do the role. That's who they wrote it for. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then she wanted to have a film career and didn't want to go heavy. You know, back then, remember, mm. seven years was like, oh, no, I want to be an actor. Yeah. Now right. it's like, please, 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 show. please. Jesus. I want to be an actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we we skipped right over MacGyver to Star Trek. Oh, MacGyver. Oh, yeah. MacGyver. Let's MacGyver it. <laughs> I, well, yeah. You, I just, one of the questions on Twitter for you was about, please tell us about your uh, time on MacGyver. And I, I was like, oh my God, you were on MacGyver. Yeah. 
And I don't want to get off of Star Trek because no, no, we've got all here, but MacGyver is. But but you know, MacGyver was like it was really action adventure, and when you did those shows, it was a little. I mean, I did one about uh, fires, oil fires, and you know, being coated down with you know all that stuff, fire repellent, or falling, having to run through this. Uh, I don't know how I went this far into the lake and it was probably, I don't know, like 60 feet in, but I fell and, you know, you go, what's in this water? Mm. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Right. And it's like, and actor cream. Yeah. And it's just like, you do it. You, right. you And I never thought of myself as action adventure run through the lake or the fire and go, Oh God, Oh God, you know, right. That's hot. My ears. Yes. Really. <laughs> How did it look? Yeah. yeah right. Well, that's, right, right. <laughs> boy, you know, the last time I did that was on wildfire, a show I did with a bunch of horses and I did my, I did some minor stunts with these race horses yeah. that they had um, agitated, uh, which is on purpose. They had agitated on purpose yeah, because it was supposed to look like a stampede. Right. And my character falls back. So my head, there's nothing between. I mean, we're in New Mexico and we're just doing it. We're right. just worried about getting the shot. Right. And me too. And I remember I got, I got glanced by one of, the, just glanced. I can't tell you what issues I've had because of that. Oh, really? Oh my God. And then one of the producers showed me when I came into loop, he said, I have to show you the footage because I go, uh, and I go, he, he got me. And as I go like this, his back feet go like that, right where my head was. Oh, oh God. Man. And, but I got up and went, did you get the shot? Right. Oh, it's oh. the last time. I, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, actors are resilient animals. Like, I have seen some actors do some incredible, uh, completely inappropriately unsafe things uh, and do exactly that. Did you get the shot? And well, you know, it, it's... What is it? A, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it has to be more than just like a producer or a director is asking you to. Like, Oh, yeah. Well, there, it's it's a whole state of mind of whatever this is that we're doing together, I want to be a part of making it happen. Mm. We are all collaborating and that it's just my part of it. It's like, did I do that part? Did we get it? Yeah, when there's yeah. 70 people standing there looking yeah. at you. Yeah. And there's an energy to that too. Yeah. And if you break that energy by saying, I'm sorry, we're going to have to figure this out because yeah, I'm not back doing tomorrow. that. Yeah. You know, there, you know, it breaks... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I there was one time for me as well where I I was actually on our show where I we had on a Friday we didn't have enough time to shoot what was going to be a swamp. Me jumping into a swamp and oh, by God. Monday it was an actual swamp. It smelled like it, and I would, at that point just went. But this is what happens. I said, "I'm not doing that." <laughs> like, but but it but says we, in the script we have, you have to. to. Yes, yeah, it says right here that <laughs> it's on page. Four. Trip jumps into the swamp, and I was like, "Okay, but I'm not doing that." Um, we have to figure out something else. So, you know, a couple hours go by where, where they're trying to figure something else out. Right. And you know how much that's costing. Uh, you know so clearly how much that's costing. And then ultimately, my they called in my stunt guy. And he was like, like, I'll jump in there. I'll do it, whatever. <laughs> well, I was like, all right, God bless you, man. Um, I'm not going to do it. Uh, you know, because look, nobody knows whatever. I, I've got, I've got ear problems. Name? Oh, yeah. You know, and you don't so, want some bacteria. No. So uh, but, you know, you see that you're part of this machine putting something together and this machine in itself is setting up for you to be the one to succeed in it. Yeah. You're the one who gets the accolade when it's right. You know, and, and if you don't succeed, there's a different vibe than say, oh, we got to go again. We got something wrong with the light of the camera did something fluey. You just kind of go like, oh, all right, we're going to go again. But if you don't do it or can't do it. I just, it's embarrassing and shameful. At least I've felt that way before. Yeah, again, where it's you, 75 people standing there looking at you. Yeah. And the dark part of it too is this attitude. I don't know if it's changed of there are 10 more behind you. You don't yeah. want to do something. 
we'll get another actor. So, they, I was constantly, it, when they renegotiated my contract, th- they used, there'll be a shuttle pod accident. Oh no my way. God. They said that to you? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So, so it was heartwarming when a shuttle pod accident actually caused me to keep my job because they made a reason why I was pregnant. Oh, and, yeah. and they, they, so it was like, thank you writers. It, it, they, they made shuttle pod, not a, not a, you know, traumatic trigger for me. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Shuttle pod is a traumatic trigger for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you get pregnant on a shuttle pod accident. So that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Well, that, if Dr. Bashir is involved, see, he it, takes the, ba- yeah. <laughs> he takes the baby from one person and Miles puts Bryan's it. Of course. Wife. Yeah. Yeah. Keiko, yeah. Of course. Keiko couldn't carry it. So I could, that's, yeah. that's how that works. The human oh. baby into the Bajoran rebel major. She but, carried O'Brien's baby. That's actually a really fun series of episodes where you're carrying Miles O'Brien's baby. Very interesting. You didn't have to walk around with the potted plant uh, when you were pregnant? No, I was big and proud. Yeah. I was 60 pounds bigger and out there. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. In the jumpsuit? Uh, no. No. <laughs> No, although, you know, I would have done that, too. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is what a pregnant woman looks like. Um, no, they gave me a little shift. Like a muumu uniform. A little bit of a, yeah, yeah, so that I could grow. And then after I had Django, they kept me in it and padded me for a while. Give me a moment before they put me back in the orange in stretch. The sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did uh did you guys know that Deep Space Nine was it just you were doing episode one of the series or were you having to be picked up as a as a series? We were told this is seven year guarantee. This is it. Yeah, there's no way this isn't going to go. But I never, you know, I came from Broadway and guesting, and it's oh, like yeah. you look for the. Is the two week the notice right. to go up. And I right. never, I always, and I always thought I could get fired, mm-hmm. especially since I was in territory that I had never been allowed to do as a woman or behave like. Yeah. That I thought, hey, I'm going to go too far and they're going to fire me. Right. You know. Did, um, did, were you number two on the call list? Yeah. On the call sheet? Did you know, did you have any information besides the, in your audition? just your scenes? Did you have a pilot script or did you just have your sides? No, we had the pilot script. But you did for your audition? Oh, for the audition? audition. Oh, no, no, no. Did you have any idea the size of the role that you were playing? No. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. I didn't know she was number two. Nothing. Well. And so you open up that pilot script and I mean, you're all through it. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at that point, I was just like, it, it, I stopped looking at it from 35,000 feet. It wasn't like, what could this mean for my life? What am I doing? It was just like the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The work. Because, of course, I had a three-month-old baby at the time. So it was just like, stay alive here. <laughs> right, right. Keep this job. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And did, I didn't know you had a three-month-old baby when you started the show. When you booked Star Trek, you were a mom. I didn't know that either. yeah. Yeah, my my son Buster was three months old. And we just met was... today for the first time, and I didn't know this about you. How weird is that, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, it's okay, it's okay, Mark. We'll talk later yeah. about it. <laughs> Did you feel though that that uh, your character was in your wheelhouse? That you sort of had ownership oh, of it? Oh, no. Yes. Oh, you did. You did. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. It was like it was like being a zoo animal. And then being taken out of the zoo and being dropped on a savanna. And it's like, yeah, I know how to run. Let, just let me go. Let right. me go. And I, But I kept looking over <laughs> my shoulder going, <laughs> you're going to stop this any moment now, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> this fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having fun now. And then seven seasons in, you're like, oh, I'm tired of running. No. No, you loved it? Oh, mm-hmm. so many people are like, it's so exhausting. Mm-hmm. After three oh, yeah. Seasons. I mean, it's crazy yeah literally crazy making i mean the lack of sleep the oh, lack so of fun but what it's so fun though it's I mean, anyway it's flow you state. also had a baby 
And then I had two babies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I kept living life <laughs> while I did it. I just mean in the, in the in the lack of sleep element. It's not as though you were getting to go home and and get your great six hours. And the know. guilt of if I was if I was concentrating on the children, my God, I should be looking over those lines again. If I was at work, but of course I brought the boys right to to work with me. But it's a skill to be playing pickup sticks in the trailer. And then go straight to an emotional scene. Totally. And you have to just, and but I, you can do it. Right. Well. You can do it. And action. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fun. Complete focus completely. Yeah. Drop in. You just drop right in into this other place. Were you, did you have any opportunity to, to sort of give influence outside of just who you are in, in the character? I think that's the only influence I had. Um, is is who I was, and they started to write for that. They heard your voice. I, yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, and and so it was this. You know, it becomes this material that you can't tell what is what. It's right. just one thing. Right. Major Kira just became one thing, but certainly the opportunities that those writers wrote. Interestingly enough, not a woman writer on the staff. Of Deep Space Nine. Hmm. Ever. Wow. Ever. Yeah, ever. That's I, I understand never. I understand there never was. We had, someone said we had two women directors, but I only remember Kim Friedman. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, and yet her voice was very, very specific. Would they ask you, did you have, because we had sort of, uh, beginning of the season and then exit interviews with Rick and Brannon. None of that. We had no contact. Calling a writer was like, oh, we're not supposed to do this. We're not supposed to talk to them. Why is that? Really? That was set up. They said, do not talk to Somebody came to you and said, you cannot talk to the writers. It was set up that the writers weren't, weren't supposed to come to set. Uh, huh. And it so was weird. discouraged for us to call them. Although, although I did once in a while with issues that I'd have, and most of the time I lost. One I won was uh, Ducat was a Cardassian, you know, the one of the uh, species that that dominated my planet. Right, and yeah, he was the leader, and of he the was occupation the worst. Him. He was the worst of the worst, and they wanted me to have an affair with him. And I was like, oh, I've heard this Mm. other other Cardassians. Absolutely not him. Never him. So I I actually won that one. Oh, but but I'm glad you won that. Yeah, yeah, me too. As a fan of the show, that would have broken some sort of wall that like. Right. Then uh, your lifetime, your character's lifetime of of fighting to free your planet all just goes out the window because, I mean, that Dukat's character never gets turns into a good guy Mm. he always acts like he's going to and you always think he might maybe that's what they wanted to do maybe they wanted to turn his character Mm. but i just i couldn't i couldn't see it i felt like you did yeah so it was my mother who he they they had a relationship awkward too i pretend that episode never happened i have to say though that you know in, in terms of this dynamic between the cardassians and Bajorans, that second skin episode was awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, and amazingly acted by you. Thank you. I thought it was. Thanks. uh, I thought it was so well done. Is that the guy? Is that Ducat? No, 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 no. That's uh, some Cardassian. I haven't watched all of the shows. Ducat, yeah. Ducat (laughs) was, think of the worst people that have walked the planet. Played by Mark Alemo. Oh, yeah. And that's oh oh ding! <laughs> I, now I get it. Mark, Mark Alimo, Alimo, yeah, yeah. Uh, what that's funny. Um, incredible actor. Yes. Oh yeah. Incredible actor. Yeah. Really great. And a very interesting human being. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I bet. Yeah. He, he's a. Uh, there's a lot going on with him. He's still around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, here's another question, though, um, regarding the cast. Did you all get along? Yeah. Did a good dynamic? Really good. Really good. You had a lot of people. 
we had a lot of people and but it was uh, i remember one director you know when we had an op scene because we wouldn't see each other for a long time and then if we had an op scene we were mostly all together yeah. except for armin right um and it, it one director was like you're like a pack of wild dogs it's like trying to direct a pack of wild dogs shut up yeah because we just couldn't we couldn't stop catching up right I think something also in watching uh, the episodes, I I will say this, the most episodes of Deep Space Nine, it's how I got to, it is my favorite of the Star Trek series, all of of all of them. It's my favorite. I think it's so well written and so well acted. Um, I I can't gauge my own show, so I don't even count that one. But um, your show is great, Connor. Thank you. (laughs) was waiting that took, yeah. a, that took a little long <laughs> well you, you, you were in a really you, good show i st- i i love you in it and and uh dominic too um but i'm i've been watching it to watch the women mm-hmm. in it and but, but no, pulling the park was underused in a way that's it, no it was imagine. a little boys club ish yeah it was there was like oh what happened here now right uh, yeah so yeah. that I have to say about it, but my God, there there was so much great stuff about it. Well, I was saying this before you got here that, you know, um, well, on these cruises, you know, the television, all you get to watch are different, you know, shows of Star Trek. Yeah. So that's when I first started watching Deep Space Nine. And then on a Star Trek cruise on a Star Trek cruise. That's awesome. <laughs> and then uh, I've watched a lot of it since then. So. Um It requires a certain ability, I think, to be able to speak those lines. There's a certain theatricality to it that unless unless you have some amount of training, it's going to swallow you whole. Yeah, it's it's goofy if you if you're not a good actor. Right. And your show was jam packed with great actors and Uh, great writing. I mean, I was also saying earlier, earlier, you know, we were talking about how like. So good. Uh, depending on the season of our show, there were some clunkers that are just absolutely forgettable. And uh, I mean, there must have been some of that on your show, but I've never come across an episode of Deep Space Nine where I was like, well, there aren't many. There aren't any. I've, and I said this, there are episodes of Deep Space Nine that are some of the best television ever made. Mm. I think personally, there's only one of the next generation, maybe two. Also, the one, what your show has, Connor, is we were talking about this earlier as well. Deep Space Nine had the great writing and the giant cast of great actors. Uh, and and forgive me because I know that you're in this club as well. But Enterprise, uh, Trip, and to Paul, their romance, you two making out on camera, is the first time I didn't look away from the television when I was watching Star Trek romance. Hmm. It didn't make me cringe. Hmm. So you should be proud of that because that is a hard thing to do in Star Trek. Why do you think that is? Ah, uh, I think because it's such a goofy concept to begin with. Like you know the the rubber masks and you know seeing past that. Yeah, like it's uh, it's just there's something uh, in, in the fantasy of it. It's not quite. It doesn't push it far enough. Uh, uh, t- I don't know. It's, That's partly it. I don't. And it's te- it's television, right? It came out of the '60s with the original series with the very low budget. Like, w- look at this this planet of the week. It's like they shot it up here or something. Yeah. You know, they throw up rubber rocks and all that. And it's right. like, it just had that goofy sort of feeling the whole time. But that's also part of the magic of Star Trek. I think part of it, too, is that um, the relationships are not really given the amount of time that you would need Good to point. establish yeah. them and, and make them believable in a way yeah. that, yeah. you know, maybe stuff that was supposed to happen off camera. I don't know, but you know, when you have relationships again, like on a, on a crime drama or what, what have you, you, you've, it's the whole year or it's yeah. the whole show. Or you're relegated to like a, a, a romance of the week. Right. Like and there's a guest character in this episode and that's right. the romance beginning to end. Right. right. And, the, and the shows for Star Trek are a ship. That's the star of the show. Yeah. And the inhabitants who co-mingle with one another are, are, are just that. And maybe it's, bec- maybe you're kind of getting close to what I was trying to say. Maybe it's that the cast of the Star Trek shows all are kind of family. And when you're a fan of the show, like they become part of your family mm. and it's weird to watch family members make out. <laughs> That's an interesting Like even if it's mom and dad, it's like, why am I, what do I have to watch this? 
That's why you turn away. That's why you turn away. <laughs> Unless it's Connor. But not with Unless you. Unless it's Connor. Yeah. <laughs> when it's Connor, I'm like, I turn the lights down. <laughs> put on some jazz. <laughs> A little Chardonnay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I can't help myself. What are your favorite episodes? Um, That's a good question. Uh, duet. Duet is definitely one of my favorite. And not because I'm heavy in it. It's just me and another actor and slightly everybody else just a little bit. It was a bottle show. Mm. It was written to save money. And uh, they didn't want to use special effects or, you know. And Harris Eulin plays this uh, Cardassian and it's, it could easily be a play. Mm. And what it says about um, bias yeah. and all these interesting issues. And, and it, it, I, I think the writing is incredible. Just yeah. incredible. And the, the actor, I forget his name. But Harris Eulin. Yeah, he's so good in this episode. It's, uh, and you guys, your characters become friends. He's trying to, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, he, he's trying to um, confess his crimes, right? And he wants he, to be caught. He, he wasn't. He, but he wants you to figure it out. He didn't commit crimes. He wants to, he wants, he wants to take on some of the guilt and be, and be punished for, for what people. Cardassians, yeah. uh, for what the Cardassians did. Right. Yeah. And he ends up getting killed in the end. Uh, by a Bajoran who just goes, you know, and it's like, no, the only he good was, Cardassian's a dead Cardassian. Yeah, yeah. And he was actually a good man mm. who felt huge responsibility for what happened, even though he had nothing to do with it. Mm. So it's really very, you know, survivor's guilt, bias, uh, you know, racism, all these interesting elements in this show. And Harris, it was the first time He'd had all that makeup on mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, slam it on and go. Right. And then he had pages of dialogue. <laughs> so you can imagine he was like, what? Right. <laughs> what? You know, you have to learn the tone of the show and it's just the nightmare guest star of all time. And he was amazing. He was just amazing. Wow. Any others? Yeah. Far Beyond the Stars. I saw that last night. That's the what the mm. one in the fifties where he's having a fantasy about writing a science fiction. Yeah. yeah. Or is he? He meaning Cisco. Or is he? Or is he exactly? Is the entire show Deep Space Nine really just that character's imagination? Right. Yeah. That was a good episode. Right. Really? Or is and it? you didn't have to wear the makeup or the prosthetic anyway. Yeah. Or is it Not happening in parallel universes and? Right. I mean, uh, you know, they they addressed all of those things so so well. Yeah. Um, and there are more, um, but those are the two that really stick out to yeah. me. As, and I love the pilot. Oh, it's great. And oh, I love yeah. the pilot. Yeah. The pilot had no, well, no pun intended, no holes in it. Um, it was so good. I look at ours and I'm yeah. like, wah, wah, wah. your first line mm -hmm. in Deep Space Nine is you're yelling at some television screen or some viewer screen. You're throwing it all away, all of you. And then you say, and Cisco walks in and you're like, what do you want? <laughs> like, I suppose you want the desk. It was like, what a great way to set up your character. I was allowed to do that. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I couldn't believe it. Women did not. I mean, it's hard to think of it now, but that was not available. Anger at a man who was an authority figure. Mm -hmm. Not allowed. Mm. Well, Never awesome. happened. Never. Unless you were supposed to be a bitch and you were going to be killed soon. Mm. I, but I was a regular character. It, it was incredible to me. Did you feel like you were walking a fine line on how to do that at all times? I, well, I, I did, I did what my truth was and went like this for when people said, oh, she's just a bitch or that's not the way women are strong. And it was like, excuse me, it is because this is the way I am. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> when I'm angry, this is the way I am. Strong enough to tell you to fuck off. Uh, so, right, so, you know, it's like we're supposed to jump into these boxes for everybody. And, you know, instead of this wide room of however a woman is, is that woman. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it was. But I did, I I did worry about getting fired. 
Oh, I thought, God. <laughs> but Paramount wa- wasn't watching. They may have if they watched it, but they were, everybody just really very quickly was interested in Voyager. Because Voyager started how many years after you were in? I, I'm not sure. Was it you, two? You overlapped with The Next Generation by one or two two seasons at the most that's what it one was on your own and then voyager kicked in see yeah. that's right they had they were interested in next gen because they were the real stars yeah. right of star trek and, and then those people went on to voyager yes and deep space nine was like the bastard adopted child exactly yeah what exactly. stages did you shoot on 17 4 oh and another one next to 17 but yeah wow um, were you ever told by anyone to to reel it in, to rein it in, to do any of that? Well, yeah, story. yeah. Rick Berman said, called me in and said, "You're you're you're walking like John Wayne." No, oh. <laughs> really? You're like I know. <laughs> you're like Thank you me. got it. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, so many years later in La Cajo Fall, the movie, they do this whole thing about how actually John Wayne. Move very much like a woman. So I felt like, yeah, see, yeah. there Full you circle. go. <laughs> there you go. I'm not walking circle. like John Wayne. He's walking like me. <laughs> Funny <Thank> story. You. <laughs> so John Ford told John Wayne that he was walking effeminately in the first thing that he did with him and said, you figure something out. So John Wayne invented this walk and oh, it turns John out, Wayne walk? Yeah. Wow. To make it as... I guess masculine as he thought he could, but again, from what you just said, <laughs> not as much, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, you yeah. can you can take the girl out of the trailer park, but you can't take the swagger out of John Wayne. <laughs> There's something think? there. I'm not Wait, sure. I'm not what. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're so generous. Come, come back at the end of the show with a couple more of those. <laughs> maybe we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then it ends and then it ends and i was devastated oh devastated oh it was my community my flow state my place in the world uh it was everything and i and my chance to do a character like that and i went i won't get that again it's gonna be some Going back to playing, you know, someone's wife, someone's dead wife, someone's hysterical wife. I, you know, I didn't want it. Right. And and I was, here I was coming out in my 40s. So it was like, well, for sure, I, I've probably got this much to do the hysterical wife and then I'm done. Right. Uh, was my feeling. And I got a call that um they were interested in me for Chicago on Broadway. And of course, now we know they just do stunt casting all the time. They're constantly putting someone into that show, but it's still running. So they're pretty brilliant. Yeah. Um, all these years later. Uh, but that, e- even though I had my, oh God, do I want to do that? I've got two children and how, mm. uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Who did so, you play in Chicago? I played, um, I played. Oh, Roxy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. It was actually, <laughs> who are the characters? Oh my God. Roxy. You see, not one name can I remember right now. Uh, I played Roxy hard. And that was, I mean, you know, anything that is that challenging mm-hmm. is great. It was scary hard. And she carries the show. She must carry the whole show. And for 90 minutes, it's short, thank God. Yeah, yeah. But for 90 minutes, you're... You're a professional athlete. You are. Yeah, yeah. And you're projecting. What, uh, so you said that there was, there's a lot of stunt casting with that show. Uh, now there is. Did, did, did they, how many shows were you running a day or a week? Did they lay off of it a little bit because of that? Or were you still punching out? Two or three of them a day. Well, no, I. You mean on Deep Space Nine? No, on uh, the show uh, on Chicago. Chicago yeah. That's eight shows a week. A week, and we did uh, two on Saturday, two on Sunday schedule. So yeah, yeah that the weekend. Not one gets matinee you. day, two matinees, and then it's like 
You know, it's like being forced <laughs> on a Friday on this show. Yeah. The weekend doesn't really mean much because exactly. you're you're so wild eyed. So after Friday night to Saturday to Sunday, you get Monday off and you're back on Tuesday. And it's like that wasn't enough. No, that wasn't enough at all. So being forced on a Friday for people who don't know means you they you were meant were meant to have eight hours. From door to door? You're scheduled to shoot an amount of time. You're supposed to have... Right. And you're not eight, done shooting. And if you're not done shooting and they need to have you six hours later, they do what's called a force call, which it's supposed to be a request, but it's never felt like that before. Uh, <laughs> no. We, I called it a new couch. I mean, every time I got one, I was like, sure, I'll do it. A new um, couch. I felt that way the first two years. It was like, oh boy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my God, of bike. course. <laughs> After the first two years, it was like I would give any amount of money for sleep. Yeah, I just um, need. Don't pay me for this episode. Don't. Go yeah, home. just I just want to go sleep. Yeah, right. But I never got them very often. You know, it took me fifteen minutes to get makeup on, and um. Oh yeah, I just had you know they're human the spray gun. You were <laughs> you were just handsome. I w- they'd already done my hair. Yeah, <laughs> I already had the highlights yeah. in my hair. You were uh, human. All you had to was do was human. learn your lines in front of everybody. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, the hard thing about Chicago is that I also did another series in Vancouver, did six episodes of, I played Madam X on Dark Angel. Oh. And going back and forth while doing the show, while about? having two children, <laughs> and I was separated. So it was like, whoa. There was one night I was I came back from shooting in Vancouver. They would put all my scenes together in oh, one day yeah. so that I could shoot in one day and then I'd come back. Yeah. And so I I would miss maybe one show and they worked it out between them. And then I'd be back and there was one there's a courtroom scene in Chicago where my character has to and it's all done to a beat. And if the beat is lost, everybody it's like billiard balls going everywhere it and it's with a whole bunch of people on stage and i (laughs) just i was supposed to stand up and go fred casely and that goes on but like today (laughs) with names i stood up and went look at that light on me (laughs) and i stood there oh oh, you just went blank and all the chorus performers behind me were going fred casely oh god (laughs) And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hear them. It was like, where am I? Am I in Vancouver? Am I on this stage of Broadway? Where am I? And the poor actor playing Fred Casely, who had to, he had the next thing. I went, oh, Fred Casely. And he's got this whole thing. But instead of saying his lines, <laughs> you just went, ha, 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 in a valiant attempt to get us back on the beat. Right. And we never quite made it. It oh, no. was horrific so wait you would do you'd fly you'd have two shows on a sunday and then you'd take an overnight flight to vancouver you'd pack in 14 pages or 16 pages a lot of dialogue i would imagine Mm -hmm. fly back home the next day Mm -hmm. morning Mm -hmm. and do a show Mm -hmm. that's impressive Ah, you get the medal yeah (laughs) why did you do that to yourself because you it's got like, work. I got, it's the opportunity <laughs> and I'm in my forties and my time's about up, you know? Right. So, oh my God. And Madam X was yet another part that was written for a man. Hmm. And they went, Hey, <laughs> why don't we get Nana? And it was like, yep. Yes. I want to do that. Right. Yes. I want to be a badass. Yeah. It was great. So it was great. You've touched on this a little bit. And I wonder if it's still the same, but you know, one of the sad parts about this business and women in this business, actors in this business is that you get put out to pasture. It happens. doesn't happen to men nearly like it happens to women. Um, and you, you felt that that was sort of an, an imminent wall that oh. was coming quickly. Oh yeah. I heard yeah. the clock ticking. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. And it was just like, it's not like my time is up to play uh, interesting roles. It was it, my time is up to play. Right. 
I just won't get invited to the party anymore. Right. And going silver is almost a political act for me. It's like, I know what this does. <laughs> and yet I just, it it's, it's like, no, this is when I'm called to do grandmother roles and they go, you, you, no, you're not what we have in mind. I'm like, why, why not? This, I am a grandmother. I'm a badass grandma. Mm -hmm. I'm a grandmother. Yeah, I can be a killer grandma. We a, won't talk about that project. Killer grandma. Yeah, that, that was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. But then it doesn't quite happen. You don't get put out to pasture. You get you get wildfire. Uh, yeah, no, I got wildfire. I I worked. I kept working, which was a, remarkable, and uh, I got off the hamster wheel. Heading out to New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what did me in um, and stayed and went, I like this life. Mm. And maybe I can work and fly in. No. No. They 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 went. Oh, Nana visitors. She died in, no, New, Mexico. She's in New Mexico. Right. <laughs> no, she died. So <laughs> <laughs> newsflash. <Yeah. laughs> so I was gone. And in terms of agents and all of that, it was like you're gone. You know, right? And I knew that would happen. I knew it, but uh, it does. It does I? I still work. I still work. Well, I don't think but, actors really retire. Mm -mm. No. I mean, I don't think we can. No, and I'm I'm looking to you know have some longevity and get those eighty year old roles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're there. Yeah, I remember <laughs> playing thirty. I had a. I was supposed to have a twenty four year old son in one project and he was actually four years younger than me <laughs> oh my god yeah and so it, but that's the way it was women they they got really young women to play older women right mm. and for guys it's the opposite yeah. you're older than the part you're yeah. like what tv and movie world thinks is a 60 year old man or a 53 year old man yeah it's not me you know if a guy in his 50s they're gonna go for somebody who's probably closer to 60 it's that's a flip. It's strange. Wait, what? Yeah. So I I I have found that like if there's a role that says he's you early think, 50s. You think that they think you're too young. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's been my experience. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. If you're if you're 20 in the in the show, they're going to cast a 30 year old. Yeah. Because they're thinking 20 years ago yeah. of what that yeah. age looked like. Right. Right. And for a grandmother too. This is this is the truth. Right. Of being a grandmother. Right. I mean, yeah, they're, they're square peg round hole thing. I mean, that's why, you know, hence the a little bit of the white. I mean, I like the beard. And I, I like the white. It reminds me of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I have to sleep with it. I like it too. Oh, oh, anyway. I, feel, I figured out how to not sleep with mine. Yeah. Yeah. You just put it on the nightstand. Put it on the nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hand it off to my butler who stores it in my beard. Gives white, you a clean shave and then attaches variant. it in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about we get to some questions? Oh, we have a pile of fan questions. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, so Mars from Patreon asks, uh, what's the strangest thing you've had to do in your acting career? Spend an entire year, it seemed, in a round bed. I was in the uh, the soap opera, The Doctors, okay. and I was, yeah, the love interest of one of the hot doctors on it. And the, the I spent, it felt like an entire lifetime in this round bed of his. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you never got out of it? No, no. And I was, I was a doctor too, I think. <laughs> But I was, <laughs> yeah, I was always in the bed. To your doctor's bedroom, <laughs> Doctor Nana, in her pajamas, oh in a round God. bed. It sounds like a cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does that just say? Wow. I've got What's the, he usually I've there got with a medication you? for you. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh yes! Yeah. Oh my it God. was a soap opera. Yeah, my prescription for you. Is uh, bad. Did you like doing them? Soaps? Soaps? Soaps. Yes, it was like being a business person, but being an actor. It was like in at work at the same time, right. out at work at the same Done time. By seven or eight. Yeah, you know, learn these lines, do it. It's, it was just so 
you know, in the same space every day. Would you shoot like three episodes in a day? No, an episode a day. One a day. Good Lord. Because I've got a friend who who's on one now and- Three a day? Well, maybe not three, but they'll do more than one. Wow. You know, especially if it's particularly character heavy for a, for a specific actor, they'll they'll block it and do- Oh, yes. Sort of the three episodes oh. for that. I mean, it's 80, 90 pages. Yeah. You know, imagine. Yeah. Wow. It's had a hard time with eight and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's different. It is different. Once you've done it for a while, you know what you're going to say or a version <laughs> really? of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get it. You you get all the relationships and what you usually say to this one. And it's usually a, a variation. I mean, that's the way it was back then. And as long as you got close yeah. enough. Yeah, close enough. Right. You keep going. Right. I, we did the doctors and I remember we were on the set of the hospital and my my doctor, my lover, got in a fight with another and they had a fist fight and the wall, they hit the wall and the wall was going like, Wobbly. it's okay, keep going. It's like, <laughs> they'll never notice it. it. That's, awesome. Won't notice. <laughs> that's awesome. Now that's quality entertainment. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's what we strive for here <laughs> on the shuttle. All right. Show. Uh, Scott Lakes from Patreon asks, if you could go back and give yourself some advice on the first day of shooting DS9, what would it be? Uh, trust yourself and breathe. And by breathing, um, I mean, be inside your body. Don't be out where the director is looking at you. Don't be, you know, worried about is is the cameraman getting be just be inside your body. Hmm. I like that. I have a question. Have you done coaching? <laughs> <laughs> I have and I love it. Yeah. I love teaching actors, young actors. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh Are you looking for a coach? <laughs> well, no, it just sounds like she would be a great coach, so I yeah. yeah I, I think yeah, there's sure. there's Maybe. so much that Maybe comes can coach me. <laughs> there's so much me. that comes with acting yeah. that is about experience mm. and about finding once you've done it for so many years you find ways to not hurt yourself. Mm. And I think those are the best things to teach young actors yeah. how not to get in your own way, how not to bring it home with you. Yeah. And how not to have a trauma hangover. Did you That's a thrill thing? Have any particular sort of style of training? Say, did you work with Meisner? Mm -hmm, did you do mm -hmm. Adler? Yeah, I didn't either. I, I my 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 rule book is actually a pamphlet on acting, which is the Jimmy Cagney is hit your mark, open your face, and tell the truth. And however you have, wherever you need to, whatever it, it takes to get there, that's your job. Right. But mm. those are the things that you're you're supposed to do. That's really interesting. Right. I thought you were going to say that I went to the school of being naturally talented. I went to the school of the gift. I'm so <laughs> gifted. I, I am the gift. <laughs> Did you see my body? <laughs> okay. Uh, Stephanie K from Patreon asks, I really enjoyed your performance on the episode of Night Court that you did. Basically playing a different character every line. What was it like working with the cast? You know what? They were, uh, m most of them were not easy. Uh, really? Yeah. It, I think they had done, they were, they had done the show a lot. I don't know what was going on, how they were being treated, but that was the show that I went, if I'm ever on a show, I'm going to make sure a guest star feels welcome. Mm. And, you know. Oh, interesting. It, it, they, 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 you know, it's so easy. It's so easy to lose sight of being human. And uh, they were big stars. Mm. That was huge when it was yeah. on. Yeah. John LaRiquette was lovely and he was lovely to work with. He was kind. But for the most part, every it was, it was tough. Interesting. Great. Oh, yeah. Wow. Do you think that I'm a little those, some of them didn't want to, you to steal any of their thunder? I've experienced that myself where if you walk in and uh, this happened to me a couple of times where you walk in, I try to walk in as, you know, I know it's stone cold. I'm, I'm prepared. I've made choices and I, and I, and I own my space. You walk in as the answer. 
Well, that's we've talked about this yeah. a few times. You know, mm-hmm. you walk, you walk in is the answer, and you feel that, and you believe that, and then you get the energy from other people that, you know, sort of side eye looks or just things that don't make you feel at home in a place mm-hmm. where you're supposed to be open and honest. And don't upstage me. This is my house. Yeah, yeah. You know who is like that? Who? I'm really going to break your heart. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And this is my experience and my experience only of him, Andy Griffith. <gasps> oh, my heart. Oh, really? I did three of those. The Matlock? Mayberry? Matlock. Oh, Matlock. Yeah. yeah. And he was... <laughs> Mayberry. Yeah, you were 11. Tough. He was, was he? He, hmm. was, he was very tough. He had an issue with me. Maybe he didn't like what I did and I kept coming back like a bad penny. I'd turn up. Right. You know, that could have been like, <laughs> what can I do to get rid of this one? Right. Um, I don't know. But he was, he. Did you park in his spot? Yeah, no. I swear to God, nothing like that. Mm. Uh, but it, he made working really, really tough. Oh, that's really disappointing. Uh, especially for my friend, Mike McCall, who. That's his hero. Yep. Doesn't change what he did on camera. No. It was amazing. It also doesn't change the fact that he was the one who gave us residuals. Is that right? Yep. Yep. He, Matlock? He demand, well, no, it was on Andy Griffith, I believe. He demanded that, um, you know, when there were reruns, that there were people were getting paid for the work they'd done. And um, well, thank he, he God got, for him. He, yeah, he got it. He got it through. But he's an asshole. <laughs> Sometimes all you need is an asshole on your side. <laughs> but to go back to Stephanie's question, the the Reinhold Wiggy was the executive producer of that show. And he, can you believe all the names I can't think of? Reinhold, Reinhold Wiggy, Wiggy right. I, comes like, it's like. <laughs> Just slipped right, and right there. And then Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> and then Roxy, I'm like, what? What was that character I played I? for years? Uh <laughs> That's he uh, he was a lovely man, and I ended up doing a pilot for him after that show. Oh, cool. But it was fun. It was it was a fun character to play. Very cool. Okay, next question: uh, Lee Disson and Melissa, and a few I think others. It's Melissa. Oh, great. Lee Disson and Melissa. And a few others um, are asking, in body parts, uh, you touch your pregnant belly, look at Bashir and say, this is all your fault. By now, we all know you were having a baby with Sid. How many takes did you shoot and how did you go through it without cracking yourselves up? Yeah, I think that was like a really early Easter egg ever. Like one of the first that something is said for the audience to understand. Mm -hmm. Um, And... I don't think we did more than one take of it. Oh, well, I don't think we did. I think it was just the one and it was, uh, you know, and Sid is English, so he's going to be chill about all of it anyway. Right. (laughs) So he wasn't going to like catch my eye and start laughing. He's, he's always, you know, so yeah, but it was, it was a fun inside joke to do. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Uh, Nancy Congdon from Patreon. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> what is the genesis of your stage name, Visitor? <sighs> oh, uh oh. Nancy, all right, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> and it's going to sound like a story, but this is the truth. I said, you know, when I was younger, it was like, oh, God, I can't tell this story. So, yeah, it was in my family. It was an old family name. I, I don't think anyone has the name Visitor. Okay, so uh, my elder brother, who's no longer with us, uh, was named Paris, and he had this predilection of naming people. And he was this, you know, my, fa- my family's full of mythical creatures, very interesting. His story in itself is a book. But one of the other things he did, besides all the war dog stuff was he named people and so i said paris because i went by nana when i was a chorus girl and it you know it got to be an issue and you can't get a social security card with Mm. it just so i'd be nana nana and i didn't want that and it was too close to nanu nanu and it's like (laughs) so all right so what do i do i said paris give me a name he said he said i'll write a name on a piece of paper 
But if you take the piece of paper, you have got to use the name. And I said, but if I hate the name, I can't use it. You've got to use the name. And he said, I'll tell you, I do see you signing lots of autographs if you take this name. You'll you'll sign this name a lot. And so being, I don't know how old was I, 20? Something like that. I went, okay. And I opened it, it was like, and Nana is, of course, Nana is my name. Your name. But yeah. Visitor was the the thing that he gave me. And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. What? And like a good little sister, I kept the deal. Oh, did he explain there no, why? There was no like no. consequence? If no, you... he was just being, you know, oh my he was God. being weird. <laughs> I don't know. He was, you a, know. That is a good like, story. Okay. It is a great name. <laughs> it is a great name. And it doesn't sound like a real story, right? That's why I don't, <laughs> I didn't used to say it, but that's the truth. Were you ever, um, oh, does it, I'm sorry. I don't want to move on. Are you saying that you have like a canned bullshit story that you tell people at conventions? I used to say. It's an old family name? Yes. Oh my God. Just to get past it. I love it. Because yeah. who's going <laughs> to, I'm going to sit down and say that? Yeah, yeah. It's like, who believes that? That's the piece way of paper, more the piece of paper, and that I did it and that I kept it. It's all kind of crazy. Do you still have it? <laughs> no. Oh, that's sad. No. Are you saying this is, just, this is a scoop then? Are you saying this is the first time? Oh, uh, you've heard it I've first. said it. This may be the first time film that I've said it, mm. but oh, I wow. have told people the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, were you ever, um, who was that guy? Art? He did with Nina. Um, he, he did the um, illustrations. Oh, yeah. What was his name? Art? Yeah. Oh, God. Art Fleischman? <laughs> no. No, Art. You know, all those, yes. oh, there were at Sardis. At Sardis. Yeah. Did he ever, did he ever mm, do you? Yes. Yes. I think for my one and only, I think I'm in there. Are you? Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. You and Picardo, has, he has one. Yeah, but I'm like in amongst the chorus. But you're in it. But I was in it. That's right. I'm in it. Yep. Wow. Are you not, are you not in it, Connor? No, I think by the time uh, anybody would have noticed me, I don't think he was alive anymore. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, no, I never got one. I am in um, an episode of an issue of Mad Magazine. You're also in an episode in a Mad issue Magazine. Of Star Trek Magazine. What yeah. did they do in Mad Magazine? They did a send up of our pilot episode. Um, I, my character's name was Drip Tuckus. Drip. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Why don't we move on to trivia? There's a lot trivia? of questions This here. is going to be terrible. Go ahead. Well. Yeah. I don't expect us to win. Okay. All right. <laughs> but we are playing for someone. It's like, wait, wait, don't oh, tell me. No. <laughs> yes, oh, no. This is the worst. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this... I played Password online for Gaze in Space. And it was like, I felt sorry for each person that worked with me. It's like, so sorry you're going to lose. <laughs> Actually, I did okay. Did you? Yeah. You might so don't win. write me out. Don't write me out yet. Let's he, see. Uh, Connor's been on the winning team once or twice. Yeah, but it was dumb guesses the entire time. I just got lucky. <laughs> All right. And well, the, the format was a little different. You you were asked three questions to my one or something stupid. Yeah. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so. Okay. So the way this works. Yes. To tell her. So you have to completely <laughs> ask the question. Yes. Multiple I have choice. to Multiple choice. All of, well, At the end of that. We say, like, you know, if you have it, you, you go, no, no, or I go Connor. And then usually Mark says it first, but. Um, your name, saying your name is the buzzer. And, but we get uh, to. Okay. We get to confer. Okay. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. But you have to wait until all the multiple But why would we are. confer? Because us against him. Got it. <laughs> Got Star it. Star Trek people versus me. Versus Savant. Oh. Savant. <laughs> Savant's a good thing. Is it? Yeah. No, an idiot Savant is, is, is not it, a good thing. Is it now? <laughs> is it though? I'm sick of being called that. <laughs> Today, Connor and Nana are playing for our Patreon member, Lee Nickel. Hi, Lee. Yay. Nice. Hi, Lee. Congratulations, Lee. I'm sorry. Thank you for everything. <laughs> if we win, you get a new car. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, <laughs> all right. <Not> from us. <laughs> <laughs> from Unless somebody. We get more Patreon. <laughs> right. You get a new car someday. Right. Someday. Yeah. Along, you might. It yep. might be that big. <laughs> But it's a car. We'll give you a stage name. I like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Question number one. Who is Data's brother? A. Dorn. B. Grok. 
C, Lore, or D, Borg? Connor. That was, that's Connor. Ooh, that was Connor. Can, he, can I hear those again, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, for yeah. real? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A, Dorn, B, Grok, C, Lore, D, Borg. C? That's what I think. C. Yes. Woo. Cheating. You don't get a new car. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yay for you guys. Question number two. Which of the following is a Klingon insult? Okay. A. Parmok. B. Deblock. C. Dokta. Or D. Quinaga. Uh, I, I think it's C. What is the, what is I've C? I've got no idea. Dokta. Yeah. You're going with C? Do you... Oh, is that where Marga? You're going to go with C? The block? No. It's not? Yes, it is. Sorry. Oh. Yes, it is. B, the block. This is a Klingon insult, though the meaning is unclear. Block. How could it be unclear? How can you not know what that means? The block. I mean, they've, tra- they've translated the works of Shakespeare. That's true. I wonder what talk, it means. Bay, talk, talk. All right, yeah. question number three. In the episode, Mud's Woman, what was the name of the pill the woman took to stay beautiful? <laughs> the beautiful woman. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Is that wrong? Just to wait for the shoot. questions to be. Oh, oh shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to just give it to you. A, Eve drug. B, Aphrodite drug. C, Venus drug. D, Eros. No, no. Mark. That was not. Yeah. Venus drug. Venus. Venus drug. Wow. Woo. Holy moly. You guys are doing great. You too. Question number four. What quadrant is home to the founders? A, Delta quadrant. B, Alpha quadrant. C, Beta quadrant. Or D, Gamma Mark, quadrant. Mark, 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 Mark. Gamma. Yes. Gamma quadrant. Yes, yes, yes you're yes. correct. And, and I do believe it was Mark. <laughs> I was looking at you to tell me. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> Forgive me, the producer and me just... Took control of the situation yeah. <laughs> when no one else made a decision. So, so we're, we're at a tie. Okay. Are we tied? Is there one more? Oh, yes, God. there's one more. All right. Who was originally cast as Counselor Deanna Troy? A. Majel Barrett. B. Marina Sirtis. C. Gates McFadden. Or D. Denise Crosby. Mark, no. Mark, Mark. <laughs> Good. Because yes. I know it. Was it Mark? I know it. I think that was Mark, but I'm choosing Nana just because. Ah! Oh. Nana. Well, I know that, I mean, they never shot it that way, but Denise Crosby was originally thought to do the role. And, and, but what? No, I'm just watching. I'm going to say yeah. Denise. Yes, 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 you're right. That's it. <sighs> Answer is Denise Crosby. They were cast for each other's roles and it swapped in a rehearsal or something. Right? Really? Uh, it, was, it was originally cast to play Counselor Troy and Marina uh, Sirtis was cast as Security Chief Lieutenant Macha Hernandez, but they switched roles during rehearsals. Yes. Marina Sirtis. And the Lieutenant Security Marina. Chief's name was changed to Lieutenant Natasha Yar. Interesting. There you go. There you go. Nice. We won. You won. You hey! Shit. We won. Hey! Nice. So that is now awesome, you get you to guys. do a promo uh, at the end, congratulating Lee for winning for him. I guess. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. That's okay. <laughs> he feels defeated. I'm not a sore loser. <laughs> and now we're gonna play "Stuck on a Deserted Island" with Connor Trenier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good times. Handsome Island. Handsome Island. <laughs> You're so we're gonna, handsome. We're going to make it a series. Yeah. <laughs> Connor Trenier gets stuck on an island filled with Connor Trenier clones. That's right. Oh my God. And it's about the love triangles uh-huh. that crop up. Ugh. You are spending the rest of your life on a remote island. And you are allowed four things. You're allowed an author, all of their work. You are allowed a dessert. For instance, if you pick... Cookies, you get to have all of the kinds of things. Uh, okay. Um, your musician, all of Beethoven or all of the Stones or whatever. And then your cuisine. Okay. So. All right. So the author would be Mihai Chiksen Mihai. The uh, food would be French. The music 
French food would be. <sighs> it's forever. <laughs> Oh, and this segment is called Stuck on a Deserted Island with Connor Trenier. So. <laughs> so you have to live with this, too. Yeah. Oh. I've never read that author, He's so worried. that'll be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're worried where you're going to have to live with. Um, uh, music, I... Uh, uh, yeah. Music, it would be everything from Chucho Valdez. And what was the other thing? Dessert. Dessert. Pie. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. We have a pie obsession over here. Yeah. On the sofa. You guys can come visit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> on your, from your deserted island. Yeah. Yeah. Because it can be everything. Yeah. He's going to make you a pie. This one. Are you good at it? Mm -hmm. He is. Pretty good at pie. Well, I better have an opportunity. What's your favorite? From Minnesota. So. Is that a thing? It's a thing. thing. In, in Minnesota. Rhubarb doesn't grow everywhere here like it does in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Uh, Strawberry rhubarb pie. I'm, yeah. It's oh. the heaven on earth. Yep. Dessert for me. It really is. Here I'm restrained. I'm restricted to blueberry, and <laughs> pumpkin. and Cherry. Chocolate. Apple, apple. Cherry. She likes cherry. I'm the cherry. Yeah. What's your favorite? I think fresh blueberry, although it's oh. not so fun to make because it's yes. too simple because yeah. it's not cooked mm. but oh my god and so like your your crust do you want a lattice top do you like it open top do you want like a crumble crust for or uh, yes crust? <laughs> all of it like a gram i want i it. want just, every yes. crust there is just getting That's three pies. Pies. Want it all <laughs> my favorite pie like is key lime pie i think key lime pie really? is my favorite i love key lime pie are you, are you just saying that because your character in Star Trek was from Florida? or you No, no, he liked it? pecan pie. <laughs> I love pecan pie, too. Yeah. We should Key lime is my least here. favorite. Is it really? Yeah. I don't get it. Oh. It's not lemon. It's... It's, it's, it's not. It doesn't have meringue. <laughs> well, I don't like meringue. Oh, mm. I love meringue. Really? I, mm. that's, that's a thing that I, even if I have um, lemon meringue pie, I take off the meringue. I think you Sounds haven't boring. had good meringue. Maybe not. It can be spongy, and what's the point of that? But if it's soft and burnt on top, and oh, but it doesn't taste like anything. Oh, it does. Oh yes. Really? <laughs> oh yes. Like burned. No, 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 no. It's meringue is great. Meringue huh. is good. Well, I'm not good with that stuff. I'm good with fruits. Hmm. Yeah. And I can't stand the jelly pies. You get like je jelly pies from the stores, you know, where you buy it and it's basically like apple jelly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. No. They're like blueberry no. jelly in a crust. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, oh, we have a gift for you. Ooh. Oh, yes. Um, I love gifts. Well, uh, <laughs> this is... Um, Erica asked if if you like wine, and I, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she does like wine, but... Um, I've been on, uh, <laughs> been on the cruise, uh, with you and, um, it, it's a lot of this, which it's, is it's <laughs> constant that <laughs> it is. constant that and it's uh Casa Amigos. We're, we're looking for some sponsorship. Um, I am Blanco. so grateful. Thank you so much. So <laughs> the, the best margarita that I know of, um, is half a cup of this. Half a cup of fresh, this is to make two, half a cup of fresh, lime, yeah, no, that's a big, <laughs> it's still a big one, actually. So a half a cup of tequila, half a cup of lime juice, a quarter cup of orange liqueur, oh. uh, and that's it. So have like you a ever, lot of ingredients. You ever had ranch water? Yes. No, what is ranch water? Ranch water is tequila, club soda, and lime juice. And oh, it is. I love it. Yep. Uh, that's the, when I'm too lazy to squeeze a lot of lime juice. That's what I'll have. Really? Yeah. Ranch water. It's and really a good. A lot of people don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah I've never heard it. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. And you can have it's a it's a bigger drink. So if you're just drinking tequila on the rocks with lime, you're going to make it through more of the night. M more. Are, are you are you <laughs> suggesting I do that on the cruise this year? Maybe. <laughs> Get into a little less trouble. When in Rome. <laughs> you know, they told us on the first day of the cruise, it, and I get 
sick. I get motion sickness. Oh, they the said the best thing to do is eat and drink a little bit all day. And they meant a little alcohol. And so I went, okay. And it does. It works. Just following the rules. It what works. What a wonderful. Uh, now I'm going to go on cruises all the time. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm just going to live on a boat. So <laughs> Thank you. Drink all day. Thank you so much for this. I will put it to good use. Promise. You're welcome. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we are very grateful that you came to spend time with us. Today. Yeah, so this was you. fun. Yeah. Yeah. This was yeah. really, really fun. We, we hope that you'll come back. Absolutely. And encourage your friends oh, and colleagues well, to come back. Oh, well, we also, before we go, we want to talk about your book. Oh, yeah. The book that you're doing right now. You want to let everybody know what, what's going on? Yeah, it's the, the, the book that just because of COVID, it's, it's been delayed and delayed. And I need to talk to all the women on the shows that are active now, and I've had to wait because of COVID restrictions. But once I can do that, um, it's just, it's been so interesting. It's been a real journey for me. I, and I know they say it's supposed to be, and I thought, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I'll learn some stuff, but it's shifted me mm. to really study the 60s, to look at the show back then and what was what it was doing to speak to the people that were touched by it or changed by it or inspired by it to, you know. Mud's women. That's how you knew that answer so fast. That's how I knew. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to get good at this yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. But it's, it's been, it's been fascinating and I'm enjoying the process and I'm down in my office, which is right next to the garage. It's this tiny little spider hole and um, I'm in the world of Star Trek and so many remarkable people mm. who've watched the show and who were behind the scenes or on camera. It's it's a lot of remarkable people. And influenced by it. And I told I mean, I talked to Samantha Christopher Eddy, Commander Christopher Eddy, who is uh, in command of the of of the International Space Station right now. And oh, before cool. she went up. Oh, she came cool. to my house to oh, be interviewed. Oh, wow. And then I went to the, I went to the, um, to the Spaisa in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to her while she was in space. Oh, wow. And <laughs> the, the, the woman who was uh, organizing it said, okay, open a channel and my mind went, because I'd said those words a million times, right. open a channel, open a channel. And yet here was this young woman who had watched the show, who got inspiration from it, really on a space station. And I'm down on Earth and my mind just ricocheted a million different ways. And that's the name of the book now, Open a Channel. And it's about opening channels of communication with women that's you know when i look back at the 60s 70s 80s those were the issues that became up that that's what became a problem for women mm. is to they didn't continue talking to each other you know we can get distracted with uh thinking of self so much or distracted with other issues and we forget to communicate and share our stories and share our experiences. So um, that's that's what I've been doing. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. cool. And what a great story. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, let me tell you one thing. So she's, <laughs> yeah, I, I know I'm going over here, but Samantha. Oh shit, you can sit here all day. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha is a fighter pilot, an engineer. She was going up to the space, she's an astronaut. She has two children under five. Oh, my. I was going to say, but she's Goodness. also got the hardest job in the world <laughs> right. being a mother. Wow. Now, I'm not going to say that because I was like, you know, and I'm in the and I've learned this and I'm in the middle of the interview and I'm like, Samantha, I, and you're going up in a couple of weeks. I, it, your husband obviously helps you with the children. And she looked at me and she said, he doesn't help me. They're his children. And that was like oh. a mic drop moment wow. for me. It was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. And now I don't ask my husband to help me in the kitchen to clean he up. It just helps. It's like, let's both do 20 minutes in the kitchen, yeah. you know, or he says it. 
But we had a big discussion, my husband and I, about it. And he was like, oh, my God, that's right. Well, Why is it just assumed that it's your job and you get help with it? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It's a big mind shift. Yeah. It's just a word, but it's a big word. I love that. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That is really awesome. Yeah. So just that moment changed my life. Maybe right. you can help me with the dishes from time to time now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just cleaned yeah. the whole kitchen yesterday. <laughs> uh, well, we take turns doing things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. I'm staying quiet to see how this develops. Yeah. Right. It get no, real interesting. She's fantastic and we share everything. No, no, I saw your uh, YouTube video, Star- Women in Star Trek. I don't know if it was a promo. I was watching it on the way here, but it looked really cool. Thank it you. Awesome. It was well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and with that, uh, we would just want to thank you so much for coming on our show. It's been fantastic talking to you. It's been wonderful. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much thank for you. being here. Yeah, thank you. You yeah. bet. Can't wait to read the book. Right. Yeah. All right. We're off. Bye, Bye Pants. Thanks so for joining much. us. Thank you. Very, very much. Cool. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. My pleasure. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon.